everybody welcome to the impressive channel a few things i want to talk about in this video i want to get into some of the met gala shenanigans because there was quite a few shenanigans that happened this year but before i get into the mess I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. Do you have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Well, Skillshare is the perfect place to start. From photography and illustration to graphic design, freelancing, and more, you can find classes that will match your goals and interests. I'm absolutely impressed with the various classes that Skillshare has to offer. Join Skillshare today and become a part of a worldwide community built around exploring creativity and developing life-changing skills. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description or use the code IMPRESSIVE will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Now back to the video, I wanna talk a little bit about the fashion. This year's theme for the Met Gala was the Gilded Age theme. When you think about Gilded Age fashion, think about the Bridgerton style, the corsets and the big puffy skirts and long trains, the extravagant hats and the dramatic sleeves and collars. It was all that stuff. The fashions in that age was pretty dramatic, especially if a person came from a higher class. So that's what the Gilded Age fashion is to me. One of my favorite looks of the night was the actress Kiki Lane's look. She wore a pink probable dress and I thought her whole look was definitely giving Gilded Age debutante vibes. I loved her look and I loved the fro. I thought that was cute. I also really like Gwen Stefani's look. She wore a Vera Wang gown and this was kind of her own twist on the Gilded Age fashion. If you could see, she had a very puffy skirt but I do love the detailing around the skirt and I do like the color. I like the fact that she chose something bright and fun. So that was definitely one of my favorite looks. I also thought Gigi Hadid looked great. I like the dramatic burgundy coat. I like the stitching and the details, not only on the coat, but the corset as well. She was wearing Versace, by the way. And this was a very cool modern take on the whole Gilded Age fashion. So I was definitely here for it. I also liked Lizzo's look a lot from certain angles. Lizzo wore a thong brown outfit and I love the detailing on the coat. The gold and the black looked very nice. But when I saw the dress in motion, I wasn't really a fan of the bottom half. I didn't like the way it was designed at the bottom. So that was a major disappointment because from certain angles, the outfit looked like it would have been amazing, but that's all just an illusion. Now moving on, I wanna talk about some of the R&B girls starting with SZA. SZA was wearing a violet Vivian Westwood gown and this look was very dramatic in every sense of the word, I mean, she did a whole country western take on the Gilded Age fashion. She looked like she could have worked in a saloon or on a pirate ship. She came with a poofy dress, a big hat, gloves, and boots. She was definitely doing the most with this one, but she stuck with the theme. Now moving on, I wanna talk about Normani. Normani wore this black two-piece Christian Seriano gown. I thought Normani definitely served with this look. I really like the design around her neckline and collar. And also I like the ruffles and the makeup. Her glam team really did an excellent job with putting everything together. She looked like she could have been a flamenco dancer in the Gilded Age era, performing in a cabaret somewhere. <laughs> she definitely was giving me that vibe with this outfit, but I do like it. If I had one critique though, I would have preferred if her skirt had a higher waistline. That would be my only critique. I feel like a higher waistline would have given her dress a little bit more shape, but I'm not mad at her for showing off her abs because she has the body to do it. Her body is sick. Now moving on to Chloe Bailey's outfit, Chloe wore this golden abstract dress from Aria and this was a very, very unique take on the Gilded Age fashion. She kind of went in a more futuristic direction. The shape of the dress was very exaggerated, but she still incorporated some aspects from the theme. She had the built-in corset and the puffy skirt and the dramatic collar. She wore this golden neck piece and I thought that was a very creative take on the theme. It definitely looks like an editorial look. So I really liked it. I understood the vision and I think Chloe and her glam team executed it very well. 
Now the Kardashians glam team did not care at all this year because every last one of them looked a mess. Every last one, besides Kendall, but even Kendall was looking a little mid. Her gown was nice, but I didn't like the makeup. I thought the faded brows took away from her look. Now Kim Kardashian did something very interesting. She actually wore Marilyn Monroe's $5 million gown. And this was obviously a cheat code. Kim knows that wearing Marilyn's gown was obviously going to get her a lot of attention. She didn't even have to do much. She didn't have to be creative. She didn't have to stick to the theme. All she had to do was recreate somebody else's look and get praised for it. And I'm deviating from the topic a little bit, but I have to bring this up because I thought it was so weird. Kim was gifted a lock of Marilyn Monroe's hair and I want you to see her reaction to this. This is weird. <gasps> what is this? That is Marilyn's hair. You can clone her. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my God, I'm literally going to do some crazy voodoo shit that I want to <laughs> And I channel her. This is sleeping with me every night. Sorry, babe. <laughs> So Kim says she's about to do some witchcraft and channel Marilyn Monroe's spirit through her hair. She even brought up cloning. I thought this was very, very weird. And you see why Kanye had to get up out of there. You see why, because that whole family is into that dark magic stuff, especially Kim. Kim is gonna be doing some energy harvesting, whatever she does to keep herself relevant but she's definitely going to be channeling some stuff. She was not joking when she said that. Now there were a lot of Marilyn fans who were very upset with Kim because they feel like she's exploiting Marilyn's legacy. They feel like Kim is being very disrespectful for trying to emulate her and trying to capitalize off of her. They don't feel like she's paying homage to Marilyn, basically. This is just a way for Kim to suck the energy and life off of somebody else to stay relevant. But this is nothing new. Kim has been exploiting and stealing from people since forever. But she better be careful what she conjures up because Marilyn had a tragic end. So if Kim is trying to channel her, she better be really careful. She could have the same end too. But I don't wish that on her. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. But at the same time, she needs to be very careful because she'll mess up her entire life over that stuff. Moving on to Kylie. Kylie showed up in Virgil Abloh's off-white t-shirt gown, and this, of course, was a mess as well. And bless Kylie's heart, she tried. I feel like she was trying to recreate the look that Beyonce did a while back, but she just failed. And she added a snapback hat with a bridal veil, but it just didn't come together. It was kind of all over the place. Now, Kylie should have taken some notes from Nicki Minaj, because I think Nicki executed this style in a way that Kylie tried to do, but couldn't. Now, Nikki wore a Burberry gown and she wore a sporty black cap and a large belt to cinch her waist, kind of like a corset would do. And she had a big poofy feathery train and she wore black leather pants. She also had black gems pasted all over her body. So the look was fly. It was definitely a more modern, sporty, urban take on Gilded Age fashion. And I thought she pulled it off very well. She represented her New York roots while sticking to the theme. And Nikki had one of the most tweeted looks of the night. I saw that she had over 500,000 tweets. So she had a lot of people talking and I think people were just pleasantly surprised that she showed up. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about Cardi's look. Cardi wore this Versace gown. It was a golden dress with a lot of different embellishments and sequins and chains and heavy jewelry. When I first saw this dress, it didn't really scream Gilded Age fashion to me. It was giving me glamorous casino girl. That's what it was giving me. But the dress is pretty nice. There's a lot of great detailing on the dress. The way it was accessorized kind of reminds me a little bit of Chanel, but I liked all of the intricate details. It's not something that I haven't seen before though. That's the thing. I feel like I've already seen different variations of this type of gold dress. So I wasn't super blown away by it. I think Cardi played it safe this year. She wasn't as flamboyant or over the top. And even though her dress was nice, her outfit as a whole didn't really stick out. Now, Megan Thee Stallion also wore a golden dress. She wore a Moschino gown 
And I wasn't really blown away by this look either. I thought Megan's makeup and hair looked nice. The glam was on point, but I'm not really a fan of the dress itself. But she did stick with the theme. I'll give her credit for that. Now let's get into some of the after party shenanigans. Now there is a video floating around of Megan Thee Stallion dancing with the model Cara Delevingne and they were having fun and hyping each other up. But Cara was doing a little too much. She was pushing up on Megan and Megan had to stop her and say, girl, uh-uh, we not doing that. <laughs> Megan was not feeling that at all. She looked very annoyed. And I wanted to talk a little bit about this because it seems like a common thing where boundaries get crossed in Hollywood. This is why we have the whole Me Too situation now. But I think because Megan is so open and friendly with everybody and they see that she's the hot girl who likes to have fun and dance and party, they feel like they could try to take advantage of that and disregard her personal space. It kind of reminds me of that time when Trey Songz tried to force Megan to drink. And you could see that she looked uncomfortable. She looked a little buzz and she was like, no, nah, I don't want any drink. But Trey was trying to force that drink down her mouth. This situation is kind of similar. You see a person who's trying to force themselves on Megan and she has to kind of push them away. So it's very awkward to watch. And I think Megan, needs to protect her space better. I know she's in a party setting and everybody's having fun, but there are some people who will take advantage of her fun loving open nature. So she has to be very careful. But Kara looks like she was really high at that party. And this was Cardi B's party. And speaking of Cardi B, Cardi was actually encouraging her guests to sniff powder at her party. So it's not a surprise to me that some people were exhibiting crackhead behavior like Kara was because Cardi was the one encouraging it. Playboy bunnies, tonight we're gonna have fun. Make sure you get your drinks, make sure you have your drinks. Now, when Cardi said this, I knew that she was trying to be funny, but she wasn't really joking for real because in Hollywood, a lot of people do lines. A lot of people are powder heads. So she knows what goes down at these parties and she's like, go ahead and have fun and do that. And while I think she said it to be funny, it was a wild thing for her to promote. And mind you, Cardi has been accused of doing drugs before. So this doesn't really help the accusations. That's why she has to be mindful of some of the things she says because it will come back and haunt her. Now there was a clip after that of Billie Eilish kind of looking in Cardi's direction and she looked like she was saying she's so weird. And people thought she was talking about Cardi because Cardi was promoting drug use at her party. Now when Cardi saw this video going around on social media, she allegedly threw shade at Billie Eilish. In fact, it's on site took a screenshot of a tweet that she allegedly posted and deleted. And she said, ignore Lil Miss short bus. Don't get instigated by messy fans. Last night was amazing and everybody had an effing blast. And she put a picture of Sid from Ice Age. So people assumed that she was taking shots at Billie Eilish's looks. She not only threw shade, but she confronted Billie in her DMs and she pretty much made her explain herself. Oh my God, I was so worried you were gonna see that. I was fucking calling the people around you weird because everybody was coming up to you and shoving their phones into your ass. And I was like, just look at her with your eye. Internet's trying to divide us. <laughs> they don't understand that you're my baby. <laughs> Cardi also tweeted and said, I hate the internet. Cause one, how do y'all turn one of the most lit parties into drama? Two, Ocean Eyes is a song I cater to my daughter. Three, Billy is my effing baby. Yesterday from the Met to the party, everything was drama free. Why do y'all want to turn everything into mess? So that's what Cardi said. And honestly, the problem with Cardi is she feeds into the mess. No one feeds into the mess more than Cardi. Cardi gets easily baited by trolls and she could easily ignore these trolls and live her life, but she's so hypersensitive and she finds company in misery. And it's really sad because she has a lot of great things going for her, but she's never happy and she allows the internet to break her down every single time. And every time she falls into that trap, she goes on these wild rants. 
she says wild things and she ends up deleting those posts because they make her look bad and then she proceeds to go on instagram live and have a meltdown and whine and cry and complain it's literally a cycle with her this is what she did last time she got mad at her fans because her fans were pestering her about not being at the grammys and not putting out any new music and she got really offended, especially when some of her fans were taking it too far. Some of them were calling her lazy and bringing up her children. And that was wrong of them to do. I don't agree with that at all. But instead of Cardi blocking or ignoring them, she lashed out at them. She told one of her fans, I hope your moms die. She also said, drink acid with your ugly blank. Now these were some very hateful and wild tweets. And I could imagine if another celebrity said this, they would not have been able to get away with this like Cardi. But Cardi always manages to get away with things like this because she deletes her tweets. And then she proceeds to go on Instagram Live and cry and whine and try to get sympathy. This is what she does. And so what she did recently is no different. She actually went on Instagram Live after she was getting called out about the whole drug thing. And she said she feels like God cursed her with fame like this is why i don't like talking this is why i don't like interacting this is why i don't like going to award shows this is why i don't like doing interviews anymore i can't even host anymore guys i i really feel like i'm a prisoner of fame like fame has turned me into a prisoner once you become famous you you not you can't be yourself you can't joke you can't say it's nothing you can smack nobody you can this and that you can correct nobody you can do nothing why me? Why me? I feel like God cursed me with fame. Dead ass. Dead fucking ass. God really cursed me with fame because fame is just like, oh God. Oh, I hate it here. Like, if I could click my fucking feet three times and go back to fucking 2013 when I was just a regular bitch, dancing and making money every single night, that's where I want to be. That's when I was me, not, not even 2016. That's when I was me. So that's what Cardi had to say. And being famous is not all it's cracked up to be. And I understand, I get it. I get how it could be very annoying that a person can't be themselves without always being watched and criticized. But this is something that comes with the territory. If a person wants to be in the entertainment industry, they have to deal with what comes with it. And a part of what comes with it is the fame. So I don't think she should be blaming God for cursing her with fame. This is something that she chose. She chose this life. And Cardi makes things more difficult for herself when she constantly feeds into the negativity. She just doesn't know how to be happy. It doesn't matter how much money she has. It doesn't matter if she has fame or not. She's just the type of person to always find something to complain about because she seems like she doesn't know how to truly be content with where she's at. Anyway, tell me what you all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.